there's times it would be in between takes, we'd drop down and do push-ups. You know, we would try to we would try to get the numbers in that day that we needed to get. Every project that he does, every role that we need to have him look in a certain way, man, he steps into it, he focuses and I mean the guy's a rock star. You know, he stays on it and he just he makes it easy. Before we talk about the terminal list and your work with Chris Pratt, I just wanted to ask, how did you get involved in the film and TV industry in the first place? How did you essentially go from being a Navy SEAL to someone who works in film and TV? The movie industry was something that I'd always been drawn to. You know, I loved acting in junior high, high school, uh, you know, so always had an interest in it. So being able to meet Chris and Joel just kind of learn a little bit about their lives uh, really kind of sparked it for me and and opened that door just hanging out with Chris more and so ended up training with him you know pretty uh, continuously on the the zero dark 30 project and uh, he shadowed me a bit you know continuing that to just learn of being a seal and kind of what it what it entailed and yeah we just became good buddies and here we are 10 11 years later what a story, <laughs> fantastic. Yeah. Um, in, in a general sense, what do you think the entertainment industry gets right about Navy SEAL training and what does it get wrong? Great question, great question. Um, <clears throat> you know, the, the SEAL training I think is one of those things and really the spec ops community in general, I'm okay with the movie industry not getting totally correct. Um, I think we need to have that that bit of secrecy, you know? And so there's, I think, you know, with the, when it comes to the training, it, the training is really pretty basic when you're going through BUDS, you know, basic underwater demolition seal, and that's the school that, that we go through. Um, <clears throat> It's pretty basic. You can find most of the stuff on the internet, you know? And so, it, like I said, uh, Hell Week, and that's where you see like the log PT and the stuff with the boats and, you know, the little boats where they're paddling out past the waves and all that. You're not really gonna, there's no big secrets in, in that. And so, <clears throat> I mean, I, I don't know, I can't think of off the top of my head a project or a movie that really, I mean, I guess, G.I. Jane, that one, they got it all due respect to the people that worked on it. You know, they, they had to glamorize it and kind of Hollywood it up a bit, you know, but it was, it was a bit off with the live fire during training and all that at the students going through, like it's, it's a very safe place, you know, it's rowdy and you know, it's, it's spending the, the time and energy and getting those really that filter system to find out who wants to be there. Um, and so, yeah, that, I mean, that's the first example that comes to mind on maybe not getting it right. Um, but there's the, uh, the SEAL team show that's on TV currently right now that I think does a really good job uh, in, in the training portion of it, in the kind of in the life of SEALs. And you got quite a few veterans working on that one. And so I think currently that's, um, that's probably the best uh, snapshot of a show that's, that's doing it correctly, you know, and until terminal list comes out, then we're really going to show everybody how it's done. Of course. <laughs> um, I've got to ask you, this is going to put you on the spot, but what do you find more challenging uh, acting on a production like the terminal list in the entertainment business or being a Navy SEAL? Wow. Alex, you're good. You're full of great questions today, huh? <laughs> it's, uh, you know what? They both have their, their unique, different challenges. You know, it's, um, it's uh, the SEAL training, the SEAL pipeline, becoming a SEAL, and then living that life and deploying. And man, that's a, that's a whole challenge in and of itself, you know, and especially for the, the married people that do that and go that route. I was, you know, never experienced that. And so I, I would see buddies of mine that would have a, a child and then a month later leave for six months you know, and so <clears throat> there's that part of it. And then there's just the part of being overseas and doing the job, you know, and the things we experience there and the things that we bring home with us, you know, but it's, I believe that job is a calling. I believe that everybody's that is there is there for a reason because like that filter system we're 
talking about, that's in place. If you're not supposed to be there, those instructors are going to find it and, and weed it out, you know? So it's, um, it's, I mean, it's, it's just really what you want to do. If you want to be there, you're going to be there, but you're going to, the, the beauty of it is you to your left and your right, you have the best men in the world that you're working with, you know, and you have the best men and women in the, the military that help and support, you know? And so it's really, I mean, it's, it's a brotherhood. Like we say, long live the brotherhood, you know, it, it truly is. And it's, it's, um, it's rough, but it's a blessing, you know, now as far as the, the acting side and stepping into this, you know, I, I'll always remember uh, my acting coach saying, you know, people say acting is easy until they go and, and, and try to do it. And I remember the first time I went in, into his acting class, I thought I'd be able to step in there and there'd be no issues, you know, like I got this. And I would have rather been in a gunfight overseas than be on that stage at that moment. Cause it just, I seized up, it scared me, you know, the whole, the whole deal. And so it's, it's like anything you got to put work into it. You have to, to put that time and and for myself coming in the acting side a little late in the game, I kind of had to double time, it. you know, I had to really get in there and grind. I was a new guy all over again. And so, and still am, you know, still learning, but it's, um, yeah, it's a whole a whole different set of unique challenges, but I mean, what a blast, you know, to get in there and just learn and, and work with amazing people and and uh, just learn a new skill set. In terms of your work with Chris, you, you mentioned at the beginning of the interview that he was a little on the heavier side when you first met him. When you started actually training him, um, what were his fitness levels like and how did you go about improving them yeah yeah so he he started out like I said on the heavier side due to the roles and you know he's kind of on the playing the comedic roles and and he found in his own words more success if he was a little on the heavier side and and um that that seemed to work better for him when he did zero dark 30 I think he dropped down I think he dropped probably 30 pounds or so for that role um and that's his hard work. You know, we, we cleaned up diet. We got him on the, the intermittent fasting hours, you know, which was, he responded to great, you know, but then in, of course, got him on a workout routine and man, he, he, his body responded, but he stayed with it. He stayed disciplined. He didn't cheat, you know, he, he eat snacks here and there. He stayed very disciplined and he does it on, on every project that he does, every role that we need to have him look in a certain way, man, he steps into it. He focuses. And I mean, the guy's a rock star, you know, he stays on it and he just, he makes it easy. The regimented lifestyle that you would have had to lead um, as a SEAL for so many years, is that something that Chris abided by in uh, filming for the Tim List? Since he was playing a SEAL, you know, it, it was very important to what I call being combat shape. You know, you have, you have the the movie looking, you know, ripped up in shape, but that's not. We live as seals. We're on the go so much. We we don't have a gym everywhere we go. You know, a lot of times we only have a set of dumbbells, and, and there's times where we don't have that. But you can usually find a place to do pull ups. You can always find a place to do squats. You can always find a place to do push ups. You know, and so that's really what we adopted for this training during that time is a lot of body weight stuff, you know, just a lot of push pull legs, which was the push-ups, the pull-ups and the squats. And there's the, a workout that, that we do a lot. That's famous, like in the, the, I shouldn't say famous, but big in the, in the CrossFit world. And it's called the Murph workout, you know, to, you know, in a remembrance of Lieutenant Michael Murphy, who died in combat in Afghanistan. And that's a hundred pull-ups, 200 push-ups, 300 squats. Before you start that, you run a mile, then the 100, 200, 300, and run a mile on the back end. And so that's one that, and you're hitting everything. You're hitting all, all body parts for the most part in that workout. So we hit that a lot during terminal list. That was a quick go-to that we could do. And then, you know, we call it Frogman Fridays. If we had time, he'd wear his kit that he was wearing in the show and he'd do the whole workout. So we'd have weight in there. We'd have magazines, you know, a little bit of extra weight just to, just to make it a little bit harder. Did you actually work on his psychology in order to make that 
uh, a replica essentially of what a seal would go through. Yeah, yeah, that's um, in those moments when we're doing those hard workouts, you know, when we have to have him dialed in. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it, it gets, it's a grind. It's a grind and it's, it becomes not fun pretty quick. And so we do, we, we go, we, we have, you know, different motivational, uh, you know, artists that we'll listen to during the workouts to kind of get us in the, in the right place. Um, and then, yeah, we, we have those conversations of, you know, really like, Hey, we don't have to do this. We get to do this. Like, this is something we get to do. You know, there's, there's a lot more things that are worse in this world than getting good workouts in, you know, eating clean, like being the best, you know, us that we can be. And so it's just really kind of approaching it from a, a different angle of, you know, and I fall guilty of it. Like the poor me is like, Oh, I don't want to go do this. This is not going to be fun. You know, it's like, no, I get to do this. I get to go in there and I get to do this. And and be the best me that I can possibly be. And I think Chris is better at that than I am, honestly. You know, he, the guy's always happy, always laughing, always smiling, you know? And so maybe he needs to be giving me some tips on all of it. <laughs> uh, one final question. Do you think he could have actually made it in the SEALs? You know, that's a funny question. That's, uh, as an instructor, there's a lot of times that not even really thinking about it, when I meet people, I'll run that question through my head when I meet somebody, you know, I'm like, man, I wonder if he would have made it. And that's, that's one of those things as an instructor, there was no formula. You would never know. You could have people that come in heavy set that you're like, man, there's no way this guy will ever make it. And he crushes it. Absolutely. You know, just knocks the, the door off the hinges, does a great job. And then we've had Olympic, true Olympic level athletes come through there, swimmers, wrestlers, yeah, wrestlers usually do pretty well, um, but Olympic level athletes come in that don't make it, you know, and so you ask a question like that with with Chris physically, I, I mean, I, I think he has it all day mentally with him keeping that 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 attitude, that positive attitude, funny laughing like that's a big part of the training, you got to find the humor inside of the suck you know and chris can always find that he can always do that and he's a team player so final answer yes i think chris i think chris would uh would do it i think he'd make it i i got all the faith in the world that he'd do it that's fantastic and good to hear and i'm not someone that's going to disagree with you on that one so uh, um, <laughs> jared this has been a really interesting discussion and i'm very grateful to you for putting the time you, away sir. to chat yes sir great talking with you alex appreciate it all the best, Jared. Thanks very much. Yes, sir.